Uh, good morning, uh, both borough residents. Uh, we're here to uh, discuss some of the zoning uh, amendment changes that will be on the ballot on March 8th, uh, Tuesday. Uh, my name is Kathy Barnard. I'm the um, Planning and Zoning Chairman. I'm here with uh, Tavis Austin, who is the Director of Planning and Development for the town. Uh, we want to uh, discuss the proposed seven proposed amendments uh, to the town's zoning ordinance, as well as uh, two petitioned uh, articles suggesting changes to the zoning ordinance. The uh, amendments that have been adopted by the planning board are, have been developed by usually first going to a subcommittee of the planning board. Uh, these subcommittees are made up of planning board members and interested citizens. Uh, they then take their recommendation to the planning board. Uh, planning board then has a public hearing, and after the, after the study is complete, if there are no change, changes, it, it is then ready to go to the voters. Uh, as I said, voting day is March 8th. Uh, the uh, zoning amendments are first on the agenda after uh, you vote on, on the various people that are up for re-election. Uh, the the uh, two, two zoning petition zoning articles are submitted by Wolfboro residents, and uh, they are changes to the accessory structure definition and the drive-through restaurant definition. Uh, these changes are brought to the planning board. The planning board cannot make any changes uh, to a petition zoning article, and, uh, but they do have a public hearing and then make a recommendation. So uh, first, uh, first up on the uh, zoning amendment is Article 2. Uh, this is a change to the uh, sign ordinance to eliminate the definition for accessory sign uh, definition because it's not used any place in the ordinance. So uh, go ahead, Tavis, tell us why we're doing this. <laughs> okay, uh, as Kathy mentioned, there is a definition of accessory sign in the sign regulations, um, which in and of itself is fine, but it's the only reference in the sign regulations to an accessory sign. Uh, if you look through the sign regulations, there are definitions of wall sign, projecting sign, freestanding sign, etc. And then there are corresponding tables that describe the square footage that's allowed, the location where they can be placed, etc. Accessory sign, however, is only mentioned by definition and frankly adds some confusion to the permitting and regulations of signs in town. Uh, so the recommendation that was ultimately supported by the planning board recommendation is to remove accessory sign from the sign ordinance. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next one, Article 3, is another amendment to the definition section of the zoning regulations. And it, uh, what it talks about is a, a drive-through restaurants and actually clarifies the language. Right now, we do not allow uh, drive-through restaurants in Wolfboro. Uh, so this definition is adding a, a sentence to um, the existing definition of restaurant and then again goes and adds another definition uh, of drive-through restaurants. So this amendment is exactly what Kathy's saying. It modifies the existing definition of restaurant and adds for the first time in Wolfboro a definition of drive-through restaurant. Uh, this was following a public forum that was convened by the planning board as well as a bunch of um, public comment periods and others, uh, even the survey that went town-wide uh, where the uh, overwhelming sentiment of those that participated was um, discouragement and, in fact, outright prohibition of drive through restaurants in Wolfboro. So by modifying the definition of restaurant and clarifying the definition of drive through restaurant, uh, the prohibition is... Um, more clearly cemented, if you will, in the regulations. Okay, our Article 4 uh, of the uh, uh, zoning ordinance is actually being deleted in its entirety and replaced with an amended uh, definition of 
the issue. And this is to clarify the issue, and, and it adds uh, separation from uh, schools, residential, district, and it's for uh, sexually oriented businesses. Yes, so as Kathy mentioned, uh, one, section 175-53 of the regulations uh, currently references sexually oriented businesses, but is a rather um, simple or generic way of regulating sexually oriented businesses. Uh, while this is not something obviously that the town has seen a lot of demand for, uh, the board found it particularly important to um, update the regulations uh, to more of a current standard, and that is what is proposed with this rewrite of the section. Um, so it essentially is an update of existing regulations to better address permitting parameters uh, for sexually oriented businesses, but as Kathy mentioned, um, it's moving it out to the uh, Pine Hill Road Development District um, with a special exception and has specific parameters on what's required in the application, spacing between schools, homes, uh, and other sexually oriented businesses. Um, so it gives the planning board, if you will, a lot of teeth in regulating uh, sexually oriented businesses should they move to town. In, in, in addition uh, to that, next year, the, or this year in 22, uh, the planning board be, will be looking to eliminate the C2 district uh, because we've really taken all of the um, other uses out of it and are found in other areas of town. So, uh, so there's really no need for a C2. Uh, article 5 is the next uh, article, and this is um, a propose, proposed to amend the lighting regulations. Uh, this we had a lighting committee uh, look at the lighting regulations in town. And uh, we are a dark sky compliant. Uh, so this section includes a section for one and two family homes and also includes um, in the site plan uh, regulations. It uh, also is uh, discussed for commercial and multifamily developments. Uh, but then it does include residential. So go ahead. Tell us the, uh, what the real story is here. <laughs> what, the, the, the short version of the long story is that the town has long had lighting regulations in the site plan regulations and has long had lighting regulations in the general zoning regulations. Um, what it required was a lot of, I'll say, back and forth. There were a lot of requirements where the planning board would have to go um, back and forth between the site plan regulations and the general regulations uh, in order to uh, review projects at their level. Um, and by the same token, for people doing residential lighting plans for their homes or um, accessory structures, et cetera, there were times when staff was wanting or needing to use elements of the site plan regulations but couldn't because site plan regulations didn't apply to the project. Uh, so the task of the lighting committee in this case was to essentially combine the regulations in a manner um, to put the requisite pieces of the general regulations, which is what this article speaks to, into the site plan regulations, and then vice versa, those pieces that needed to come from site plan um, to assist in residential permitting move back into the zoning regulations. Much of it is the same, but it does allow uh, a much tighter control and review of residential lighting uh, through the zoning ordinance. Okay, hey, thank you. Okay, our Article 6 is um, the Pine Hill Road Development District, and uh, we're suggesting that we delete some permitted uses in special, special uses in order to um, uh, bring the uh, district up to date and uh, what the planning board would like to see in this district. Uh, we're also adding the adult-oriented business in, in accordance with uh, the article uh, that we just discussed, Article 4. Uh, and this, again, puts in very strict um, uh, development standards in order to um, have an adult-oriented business. Go ahead. 
So in it, going back to the art, at the end of the Article 4 discussion, Kathy mentioned moving uses, uh, permitted uses and special exception uses out of the C2 district. That is essentially what happened with this rewrite of Pine Hill Road Development District. Uh, for those that know where the C2 district is, it's a small park that effectively can't be utilized by any of the permitted uses or special exception uses that are currently listed in the regulations. Uh, to that end, the board uh, believe that many of those uses don't belong in the same location as C2 anyway. Uh, we're more appropriately located in the Pine Hill Road Development District. So that is um, effectively the change that would occur with the passage of this article. Okay. Uh, article 7, uh, that, that's an amendment to the definition section, and this is sort of a, a technical issue where we're trying to get all of our definitions into one section. Uh, so in th this particular case, we're talking about uh, the lighting definitions and uh, the definitions for adult-oriented businesses. So this is kind of straightforward. Yes, the zoning regulations have long had, uh, I'll just use the lighting section, for example, the lighting regulations have long had their own set of definitions within it. Um, and there were many instances where folks didn't realize there was a section 175, 175, which was sort of the um, conglomerate of all the definitions used within the zoning regulations. So the board has made an initiative as they address amendments in particular zoning sections to make sure that the specific definitions from each individual zoning district or regulation, lighting signs, et cetera, are all relocated to the definition section of the ordinance. Uh, so in writing uh, the Pine Hill Road Development District that we just discussed, there is a reference in there to say, see also 175, 175, uh, so that all the definitions can be found uh, easily together. Right, and, and our zoning ordinance has definitions in various other sections, and I think the hope is to finally get them all into the one section called definitions so people know where to look when we're trying to define something. So, <laughs> so it's, a, it's a worthy cause, but uh, it takes a while to get these things done. Uh, Article 8 is, uh, talks about redefining the boundaries of the uh, Bay Street Limited uh, District and adding several properties which are already used uh, commercially uh, to the zone. So if you could explain this to us, Tavis, that would be great. Sure. Uh, with this, there was, a, again, a subcommittee of the planning board. It was the Filter Bed Road subgroup uh, that looked at uh, uses along Filter Bed Road and uh, particularly those where the uses did not align with the um, residential zone in which they were currently located. So what this uh, description does, and this is a, 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 I'll say a little known section of the ordinance. The town does not have an official zoning map. Uh, all of the district boundaries are defined in section 175-2, district boundaries, and then they each have a description. Um, so what is, what the planning board actually did was amend that uh, effectively a meets and bounds description of the Bay Street Limited District based on the input from the Filter Bed Road Committee and public input. And then um, if you carefully do a compare and contrast between these two images, uh, you will see the, uh, I believe it's nine parcels that are rezoned from residential into the Bay Street Limited. Uh, residential is the green, Bay Street Limited is the red. Uh, so it, this is done through an illustration here, but what is actually changing is the written description uh, that then captures those additional parcels in the Bay Street Limited District. And more permitted uses. Yes, and the Bay, Bay, Street, Bay, the Bay Street. Street Limited Business District has many more options for commercial and mixed use type development than the residential zone, which is complementary to the uses on the majority of these lots already. And how, how many properties? I believe it's nine. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, then the next two articles are the petitioned uh, zoning uh, changes to the zoning ordinance. And the first one, uh, Article 9, amends the accessory building 
definition to remove the following. Accessory buildings or structures shall be limited to a single half bath on the ground floor. Uh, th these wordings were added uh, last year, uh, and it was basically to make s certain that uh, people could not turn their accessory buildings into uh, an additional dwelling unit on residential properties. Uh, the half bath was, was added on the ground floor uh, to allow uh, people with detached garages to have a toilet facility in, in their uh, garage. So, uh, but my understanding is the petition warrant article uh, that was submitted in this case uh, is largely to do with the newer homes that are being constructed in town. Um, I will say that probably eight to nine times over the course of the last year, there were contractors coming in that were uh, being asked by their clients to install a new pool house or something along those lines. And their customers were very confused as to why they were being told they could not put a full bath in their pool house. Um, so my explanation at the time was, well, the town and uh, town meeting 21 had voted to include a limitation in accessory structures to limit it to a half bath on the ground floor. Um, currently, I will admit there is no definition of half bath or ground floor in the zoning regulations, and that's something the planning board has already put on their work plan to discuss in 22. Um, but at this time, the planning board has um, not supported this petition warrant article until the further study is done uh, to investigate this change, and accordingly, they have not supported this petition warrant article. Right, and, and as uh, Tavis just mentioned, the planning board does want to look at this issue again, uh, especially the, the half bath. I, I know there's some confusion about that, and so we want to make sure that uh, that issue is adequately addressed. Uh, article uh, 10 is uh, drive-through restaurants. Uh, this uh, petition article, uh, well, first of all, it started out in the zoning regulations in the late 1990s. Uh, in 2017 and uh, 2020, the same amendment was uh, defeated by uh, Wolfboro voters. Uh, in uh, 2021, uh, we addressed this, this issue. Uh, we had a, a public hearing and got questionnaires out to people. Uh, the pet question, uh, the public hearing had was overwhelmingly in favor of not having drive-through restaurants. Uh, so that's why the planning board then went ahead and prepared an amendment to the ordinance, which actually uh, sort of strength, strengthens the ordinance which we've already talked about. So, Tavis? Yeah, uh, Kathy summed it up perfectly. This is the same article that the town voters have defeated twice before. Uh, it's looking to permit uh, drive-through restaurants in the commercial business district on parcels having at least one acre in size. Um, as Kathy mentioned, this is almost 180 degrees um, in directionality from Article 3 that we discussed earlier where the planning board had been responding to um, public sentiment and public forum comments uh, to emphasize, in fact, proclaim that drive through restaurants are not permitted in town. Uh, and so with that, the planning board, um, by unanimous vote, recommended against this petition warrant article. Okay, so that's it. Um, we also have uh, prepared a, a voter's guide which can be, it's on the town website and is available in the uh, planning office if anyone wants to take a look at it. It actually goes through and shows what uh, words are being eliminated and added. So if, if you are interested in, in seeing that, then just take a look at the town website or, or pick up a copy at the planning board. Uh, also, Please don't forget to vote on uh, Tuesday, March 8th. And thank you, Tavis.
Thank you. Uh, this is, uh, and thank you, folks, for tuning in to listen to, uh, to us discuss these ordinances.